Well, hello, happy Monday. Uh, my name is Allie, and um, you are watching my Monday evening paint along. Um, so I am a painting instructor. I teach um, painting workshops here at my studio in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I also teach online classes. And every Monday, I come to you with a brand new, um, fun, free one hour demo here on my Facebook page. Um, so we've been working in a fall series, and I'm really excited for today. We're going to be doing the autumn leaves paint along today. Um, we've got some really pretty color in these leaves that we're going to uh, capture forever in paint. Um, so thanks for joining me. Hi Teresa, hi Helen, everyone who is jumping in, please feel free to say hello in the comments. Um, let everybody else who's watching know where you are watching from. It's always fun to see that. Um, and just to kind of give you a quick run through of what's happening here. So I teach these demos, like I said, they're free to watch, um, but I also offer an outlines download that you can get on my website, um, which gives you the outlines to trace. So you use a sheet of transfer paper, you trace them onto your little eight by 10 panel, um, and then you are ready to go, and then your panel looks like mine when you start the demo. So you can always find those on my website, um, alliecastudio.com. Um, and so if you're just jumping in now, you can watch the demo and you can come back later and um, watch the replay to paint it. So that's how it works. I know many of you have heard that many times because a lot of you guys watch me every week, but I appreciate your patience while I um, take a minute to explain it to all of our new people. Um, so yeah, let's get started, okay? So here is what we are painting. We've got these really pretty fall leaves that we're going to create in this quick one hour of painting from start to finish. We're just going to knock it out. I'm just going to set my camera up here so we can see everything. All right, looks pretty good. Okay, so I am using um, golden fluid acrylics for this demo. These are my paints of choice. If you get the download that has the outlines, you get a list of all of the paint colors that I will be using. Um, so that is what I'm going to be using. Um, and I have just kind of gone over my outlines here with a light purple. So I transferred them and then I would have just had like uh, pencil lines on the panel from the transfer paper and so then I just like to paint over these with the light purple using my skinny script liner brush like this. Um, I make my purple from alizarin crimson, Haynes gray, and white um, and that color really doesn't matter too much. I just like to pick a nice kind of neutral color to cover up those pencil lines. Um, and then the way that I start off my demos every week is I start by finding the shadows. So I'm going to mix up a puddle of Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson, my go-to recipe for kind of this neutral purple um, that we always use to find the shadows. Um, I got a little clump of dry paint in there. Um, so yeah, I'm just making a soupy puddle here on my palette and I'm going to start looking for the shadows. So one thing that I, I wanna give like a little disclaimer before we get started <laughs> with this piece. Um, this piece, I feel like it could be tricky to keep track of what is a shadow and what is like a dark part of the leaf. So I just wanna say, make sure you know what it is you're painting. So. Sometimes I even will like put my finger on my reference image. Now, if you're working on a screen, that might mess it up a little bit. If your image is printed, that might work um, a little better for this part. But just be really aware of what it is you're painting because otherwise it's easy to get lost. If you just start putting shadows in um, and you don't necessarily know how it correlates to the reference image. So just be really cautious of that like in the early stages. Um, so that being said, let's start off with this main leaf right here because I feel like this is the easiest one to find. And after we find this, I think it will be easier to find some of the other shapes. 
So I'm just going to kind of loosely map out the dark tones that I see on this leaf. Um, now this color that I'm using for the shadows happens to be similar to what the leaf color will be, but that is not planned at all and that's usually not the case. Um, I'm just using this color to separate light from dark. Um, and I'm using flat tip brushes. Uh, these are Royal Langnickel brushes that I'm using, which I usually get from, I think I get them from Dick Blick. I always have to question myself if it's Jerry's Artorama but Dick, or Dick Blick, but I think it's Blick, so that's an online art store. Um, that is where I get mine from. Okay, I'm just gonna do a, a little quick coat real quick over this leaf. So I feel like finding this leaf right off the bat just helps us to get a little less lost. Um, let's also wash in this skinny little stem dark because I can tell that that's dark. Um, okay, so now moving forward, I see a dark shadow up here at the top left. Now this is not a dark leaf, this is a dark hollow underneath some leaves. So just wanna know what's what. Um, now over here, I have the edge of a dark leaf, so I'm gonna pull that out right away because I can see that one's kind of easy to find. All right, it's so moving along. Now in here, we've got a dark shadow where this leaf kind of folds over and then it picks up over on the other side here. So by painting a shadow around this shape, now it makes this shape stand out as a highlight. I just realized you guys might not see the very top. I need to adjust my camera, that's probably better. Okay, sorry about that. I'm glad I figured that out right away. So I am just going along, looking which side of the line is light, which side is dark. Now, when I made these outlines, I did not trace every single um, every single leaf or shape that I saw because I didn't want to make this too busy and I didn't want to make it too confusing. So I really just looked for the major shapes of light and dark or the major leaves that I wanted to show in my image. Um, so. When you're doing your own work, you can kind of think about that. Remember, you don't have to put everything in. Look for what's most important. Um, let's see, Jacqueline says the brushes are from Dick Blick. Thank you, Jacqueline. I'm gonna remember that for next time. Um, yeah, in case anybody's looking. All right, and you can certainly use other brushes. I just always get a lot of people asking me about what brushes I use. Um, because they're a pretty good deal. I feel like they work pretty well. And um, that way you can always have a nice, good edge um, because I think part of being able to show your brush strokes is being able to have a brush that is not going to split and fray on you, which this one is starting to. I should probably grab a new one. You guys have heard me say that before. Um, let's see, Reem is asking, how many layers of gesso do you use? I usually do two or three, depending on what it is I'm doing. Like on these little samples, if I put on a pretty heavy coat of gesso, I might just do two. And I just brush it on. Um, so I'll brush it in one direction for my first layer and then another direction for the next layer. Um, so I'm just going around here, looking which side of my line is light, which side is dark. And we're going to push the darkest values a little bit darker later. So right now I'm just kind of generalizing, kind of cutting the whole image in half. And I'm just putting in what I feel is the darker half right now with this really thin wash of purple that I made. And then we'll come back with another pass and we will continue pushing darker. Now this actually, this whole wedge right here next to this dark um, leaf, this is all pretty dark. So I'm actually gonna come in and paint this all dark going around that little skinny stem. I'm gonna wash all of that in dark. So it's going to, for now, get lumped in with that main leaf 
um, but we'll separate those in the next pass, like I mentioned. And then here we've got a hollow that is dark. This is not a leaf that I'm painting in. This is kind of the hollow between some leaves. So just being aware of that. We're building up these dark shadows. This is a really important part of the demo because this is where we're creating our roadmap so that as we continue with more layers, we can put the brush strokes down really confidently because we're gonna just really know what's what um, and we're not gonna be lost because we're gonna have this really well laid out under painting. Um, oh, somebody says lost sound. Ooh, shoot, I hope, uh, I hope everybody else can hear me. Let me know guys if you can hear me. Let me, let me know in the comments. Sometimes it's uh, just specific to one person or sometimes it's an issue for everybody. So hopefully that's not the case. Sometimes the video just kind of pauses for a second there and that's just the internet. Um, Sharon says it's frozen. Minetta says it sounds great. Okay, well, I will say that I, I know every now and then we have some issues with the video freezing up, but I'm pretty sure that if you come back and watch the replay, um, that you get the whole thing. So if that ever happens, try watching it again after and hopefully you won't have that issue. Uh, Melissa says dropping in and out. Ooh, okay, well, I'm gonna start praying that it's gonna work. <laughs> All right. Um, just gonna continue moving along and hopefully we can pick it back up. All right. Just continuing with this first pass of some shadow and I think we just about got enough in that first pass. Um, Ginger says coming and going. Yeah, sorry guys. Maybe it'll sort itself out. Okay. So now I'm going to come in and do the next layer, which is going to be um, a darker tone of the same color combination. So I'm still using Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson, but now I'm going to have less water in there so that it's going to show up a little bit darker. All right. So I'm coming back and looking for the areas that are darker. So I can see it's pretty dark on this right top edge of this main leaf right here. And it's pretty dark over here as well. So I'm just pushing this area darker. Um, pretty dark here along this edge. All right, that all feels pretty dark. Kind of comes up to this fold in the leaf. Kind of dissolves out right there. All right, now over on this edge, not quite as dark. We've actually got a little bit of dark shadow that is behind the leaf that's coming in right there. So I'm gonna get that little triangle. Now down at the bottom edge here, it's dark behind the leaf. So I'm pushing that area behind the leaf a little bit darker. So it does that thing where it flips. Now the leaf is lighter and it's darker in the background. So I always like to point that kind of thing out so that you're watching for that when you're doing um, this kind of thing on your own and you're wondering which side of the line is light, which side is dark. Pushing these little dark shadows. Um, and again, if you feel like you're having trouble finding where these shapes are, you know, just put your finger right where you're working because that helps your brain to not get lost in between looking at your reference and moving over to your painting. Um, got a dark little wedge right here. 
So by building up these shadows, then as we start to lay down that top color, it's got that nice base to sit on top of. In general, I like the way colors look better if they're kind of layered on top of a darker tone. Um, so that's part of this process that I kind of developed where I push these dark shadows first, but I'm only pushing it really dark in the places that I see it's really dark. I wouldn't want to just wash my whole canvas dark because then I'd have to really be fighting it for the areas that I want to get nice and bright. So the areas like this leaf up here I know is going to be really bright, I'm just gonna leave that really white because then I won't have to fight it so hard to get it to that bright white tone that I want it to basically end on. So hopefully that makes sense. Got this dark little shape here. Okay, then it's pretty dark in this hollow underneath these leaves. So I think um, something to be aware of or think about as you're painting these leaf shapes in is remember, you're not gonna see every leaf perfectly. In some of these leaves, you're just gonna see like parts of the leaf. So don't try to make all the little leaf shapes look like perfect leaves because they don't in the reference image. Only a couple of them do we actually see the whole leaf shape. Like this one in the foreground and then I guess this one right here we pretty much see. But the rest of them we just kind of see little bits and pieces, little windows of those leaves poking around. So just, just think about that as you're painting. Don't try to make it look too good, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. All right, I think we're pretty close to uh, having a good amount of dark in here. Um, let's see, Reem's asking, how many layers of gesso? It was two or three, Reem, that's usually what I do. And I will lightly sand um, just to kind of get rid of some of those brush strokes. I just kind of knock, knock it down. I don't do a lot of sanding. It's really not that important. Okay, yeah, I think we got a, got a good amount of the dark shadows in there. Maybe one more little chunk right here. Okay, so now we want these shadows to be dry before we go over it with the complementary color wash. So hopefully your um, dark shadows are dry. And now I'm switching to a larger brush and I'm going to do a very thin watered down wash of complementary colors. So complementary basically means opposite on the color wheel, uh, but I don't always do a true opposite. I kind of push it a little bit and work with what I like to work with, <laughs> basically. Um, so let's start off with um, this main leaf here, which is really like a deep red. Um, it's, it's kind of like a, almost like a magenta red. Um, so I think for my opposite color for that, I'm going to put down green because red and green are basically opposites, right? So I'm going to use um, phthalo green blue shade for my opposite color for that. So I'm just watering it down. This is a super intense color. Um, I switched to my number seven brush to do this. Um, and I'm just gonna go right over that whole leaf and I'm not going to be very careful about my edges. I'm just gonna be loose and do a quick wash of color over where this leaf is. So not trying to hit it right on the edge. It's actually better for this underpainting wash if I do kind of let it go beyond the borders. Um, and now I'm also going to look around and see where else do I see a lot of red poking through. So I see a lot of red in this little window right here. So I'm gonna put my green in there and I'm gonna pick it up over on the other side here as well and wash this in with this green shape. Um, and then we've got a chunk of kind of red right here over on this side. And you know what, let's just do this whole wedge with the green. We're gonna do all of that with green, okay. All right, now I think going into the areas, um, the leaves that are like kind of more orange, I'm gonna push those into a blue underpainting because orange and blue are opposites. So um, now I'm gonna switch to my phthalo blue green shade and I'm gonna water that down. 
Uh, let's see, Judy asked, should it be dry between layers? Yes, Judy, it should be. And I see Debbie answered that for me. Thank you, Debbie. Yes, you want to make sure it's dry because you don't want those first layers to pull off as you're washing on top of it. But because this is acrylic water-based paint, it dries really quick and we're working in thin layers. So that's usually not an issue. Okay, so let's take this blue and let's put this in, in these places where we see a lot of orange. So let's just wash this blue in where it's really orange. Um, let's see, pretty orange here. I guess that's kind of red, but we're just gonna do it with the blue here. Drop that in, loosey goose. All right, up at the top, we're gonna put this blue in. So this is going to be a lot of cool colors for the underpainting because my overpainting is going to be very warm. So I'm just working with opposites here. Um, you know, I'm gonna pull my blue down a little bit more, I think. And I think, um, I think now I'm going to switch to more of a purple tone to go over basically the rest of it. So the rest of it, I see a lot of yellows and I see some areas that are kind of like a white. Um, now, normally I would go to my favorite color, permanent violet dark. However, you can't get this color anymore, guys. I don't know if Golden's ever gonna bring it back. They're having trouble getting the pigments for it, but you can't get it anymore. So my solution is to make it using quinacridone magenta and just a little bit of phthalo blue green shade, which I already have. So if I mix those two together, I get a pretty nice purple um, that will do the trick. So mostly quinacridone magenta, teeny tiny little bit of that phthalo blue, and that will give you a pretty good purple. And I'm going to use this to wash over the rest of it. So everything that has not gotten a wash yet is going to be washed in with this purple, okay? So it's gonna go over all those shadows we put down in the very beginning, and it's gonna go over the white areas. So we're not just painting it in those windows of white, we're painting it everywhere that we have not put a wash down. Don't worry if it drips a little bit, don't worry if it blends in with your other colors, that's okay. We're kind of going for like a tie-dye effect in this underpainting. That's gonna be really nice, so don't worry about that. Um, and you can see, this does make a pretty, pretty decent um, purple. It's, it's almost the same as my favorite permanent dark violet. It's not quite the same. If Golden brings back the permanent violet dark, is it permanent violet dark? Yeah, permanent violet dark. I always say dark violet. If they bring it back, I'll totally be getting some. Um, but for now, I am making do, and I think you guys can as well. It's a very nice underpainting color. Moving along here. Ooh, I put a lot of purple on top of my green there. Okay. So we just wanna cover up all that white, everything that hasn't had a wash yet. We need to get some color on. It makes the painting go quicker when you get a little bit of color everywhere. When you've built up that base, then you can just lay it on top and it'll go really fast. All right. So now this needs to be dry before we start building on top of these colors. And it should dry pretty quick. So I can probably start with um, my areas of green because I put those down first. So you can see this is dry enough that I can start layering paint on top of that. Um, so now that we're past our underpainting stage, now we're going to start thinning our paint with glazing medium. So I'm using Liquitex um, glazing medium. You can use any brand. Um, I paint with golden paint, but I like the Liquitex medium because it's cheaper. That's all there is to it really. So, um, and what the medium does is it thins the paint without um, making it like watery and runny. It makes it keep the body of the paint. Um, so that's kind of the intent of it, but then it also makes it transparent. So we'll still be able to see some of our underpainting kind of poking through. 
So let's get started. So I need to switch, I think, to a slightly smaller brush. So I've got my number seven here. I'm gonna go down to, you know, I would probably do my number five, but my number five brush doesn't, it doesn't make a very nice shape. So I think I'm gonna go to my number three. Some of my number threes hold a shape better than others. I'm gonna try this one. Okay. So let's start with the color for that green, or for this red leaf, reddish purple. And um, I think we'll start by kind of pulling out some of these reddish highlights. And so we're going to make that reddish color um, with quinacridone magenta and a little bit of white. Let's see, Robin says, why not use a hair dryer to dry the canvas? Yeah, you could do that, Robin. Um, I don't feel like I usually need to because this paint dries pretty fast, but you could totally do that. Okay, so I have quinacridone and white, and I'm gonna put a little bit of pyrrole red light in there as well to make it a little bit more of a red tone. And I'm gonna go back and put a little more magenta in. I put too much pyrrole. And this leaf is pretty dark. I'm gonna put a little bit of glazing medium in there to thin my paint out. And I'm just going to start looking for these areas of highlight that are on this leaf, but I'm not going to cover up all of my green. I'm going to leave some little windows of that green poking through uh, because that's going to play off of this red color and really make it pop. Um, I'm also thinking about the direction of the leaf, like the direction of the veins, and I'm kind of matching that with my brush strokes. So just, just kind of being aware of that. There's not a lot of depth in this leaf. They're, like the highlights are not all that bright. What's going to make this leaf stand out is when we put the bright areas behind it. So don't, don't be too disappointed if it doesn't feel super exciting as we're putting this red down because it's not going to. <laughs> but we'll make it pop later. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of the brighter tones. Now we're gonna push it a little bit darker. Um, and so I'm gonna actually mix a new red that's gonna have less white in it. So I'm gonna take my quinacridone and you know what, I'm just gonna go in with the quinacridone and put that over some of the shadows. I feel like that's gonna be pretty dark because we're going on top of this green and we're going on top of these areas where we've already built up the dark. So I'm just washing this in with just the straight quinacridone magenta right now and just pushing some of those dark shadows. And you can see I went to a new spot on my palette because I didn't wanna use the one that had white in it. If we're trying to push something really dark, we don't wanna have any white on our brush because that's gonna dull it down and kind of make it muddy. All right. That feels pretty good. And I don't wanna get too carried away. I wanna leave enough of that green showing. So I think I'm gonna let that be for right now. I'm gonna come back with this dark magenta and I'm going to drop this into this dark tone that I see up here on this other leaf and a few other places where I see like this really deep dark red. I'm gonna drop this magenta into those places, just building up those darks before we layer more paint in. Um, yeah. All right, that works. Okay, now, I think just to start giving shape to things, I wanna start putting some of that yellow tone in. So I'm not gonna put in the very brightest yellow, I'm just going to pick kind of a medium yellow that I will later on push a little bit brighter, but I just wanna to start to build up some of that yellow color. So we'll make the yellow um, from Hansa Yellow Opaque and a little bit of Pyrrole Red Light little more hands yellow opaque. This is just gonna warm it up a little bit. And a little bit of glazing medium and a little bit of white. So this is going to make a pretty warm yellow. Um, 
We're gonna start with a little more on the warm side and then when we put some of these highlights in, we're gonna make it a little cooler. All right. So I'm going to just, like I said, start to drop some of this color in. I think, yeah, that works. I'll lighten it up later. And I'm also thinking about leaving little bits of that fun purple underpainting showing through. So I'm not trying to cover it all up, but I am trying to cover up those outlines that we put down. So as I'm layering this paint in, I'm kind of going up over those outlines to kind of bury those so that we're not going to see those lines. And yeah, yellow looks nice against the purple because those two are opposite, so they kind of play off of each other. We've got that little stem there. I'm gonna paint around that stem so I don't lose it. So even though I'm getting, you know, kind of loose and gestural with my brush strokes in some places, in other places, like where that little skinny stem is, in those places I want to be more specific and make sure that I don't lose that stem. So it kind of goes back and forth where you're being loose in some areas and then tighter in other areas. It's that, you know, that push and pull. We've got another leaf. This one is yellow and the one behind it is yellow, but there's a little shadow behind it. So I'm just kind of leaving a line there to help separate those two for now. And then when I come back and push some of these yellow highlights a little bit brighter, that will help me to separate those two leaves. Let me know guys if you have any questions. I am kind of following along here in the comments. So I'm trying to watch to see if you're Wondering about anything. I know a lot of you have watched so many demos. You probably could answer the questions. So maybe that's why you don't have any <laughs> um, You guys are all becoming experts, but I also know we usually do have some new people So new people feel free to chime in and ask away if there's anything you're wondering about There's no bad questions And remember to just always be aware where you are on your reference image in relation to the painting. Don't keep painting away if you don't know where you are in the reference because you're only gonna make yourself lost. Um, you know, if you start going off track and you just keep adding color, then you're gonna be even more off track. So, you know, if, if you feel like you're getting away from it, I always say, you know, just stop, walk away, regroup. <laughs> Get fresh eyes um, and that will help you to kind of go back and figure out what's what. And I do the same thing, guys. So I would not tell you advice unless I have done it myself. All right, so those are our mostly yellow ones up there. Now coming down, we've got this yellow one down here. And sometimes it's, it's really interesting, you know, when you're right on top of a painting, it's hard to really see what's going on. But when you take a minute and get away from it, then you get fresh eyes and you can see it better as well. Um, okay, these are not so yellow, so I'm not gonna paint those in. Then we get more yellow over here. And this is kind of cool. So over here, I'm putting yellow on top of blue before I was putting yellow on top of um, the purple. And so the yellow has a different look in the areas where I'm layering it on top of the blue, um, which is kind of fun. And that's why I said, don't be too worried or specific about how, where you're putting your underpainting down or how you're laying it down, um, because it's actually fun to have it play around a little bit. Um, hi, Amy, you're just getting here. You'll have to watch it and do it as the replay, but I look forward to seeing your piece. Um, Judy's asking, when should you use glazing medium? 
So I'm using glazing medium right now, Judy, after I've done my underpainting wash, and the glazing medium is going to thin my paint out, make it a little more transparent, but it's still going to keep the consistency of paint. When you thin with water, your paint gets more like thin and drippy, so it just does a different thing. Um, so as I'm moving along, I'm not gonna thin with water anymore. I'm always thinning my paint um, with glaze, but I, I thin it with a reason, with an intention. The intention is to let the color underneath show through. Sometimes I want my paint to be opaque and thick, so then I won't use glaze. So you'll be able to kind of see that as I work, especially in the later stages where I want it to be more opaque. Um, okay, so I want to turn this um, yellow a little bit more orange to put this leaf in. So I'm going to add a little bit more pyrrole red to this mixture. So this mixture has Hansi yellow, opaque, pyrrole red light, and white in it. And I'm just putting more of the pyrrole red in. I'm going to put a little bit more glaze in too because I do want to keep this transparent. I want to keep it so that we can see this blue poking through. So by thinning it out, it's going to make it show up a little bit darker, which will create those shadows. So it kind of does the work for me by letting the shadows that I've already put down underneath, by letting those kind of shine through um, with my thinner paint, then I don't have to like paint it as a shadow. I can just let that shadow that I already put down do its thing. I really like how that blue looks. I don't want to cover up too much of it. Uh, uh, let's see, Reem says, how much glaze do you use? So really, it's, um, it's just kind of getting the feel for it. You just have to play around and see what the glaze is doing. And certain colors are already more transparent. So yellows are usually more transparent. So you typically don't need so much glaze when you're working with yellow because it doesn't, it's not very opaque to begin with. I use the most opaque yellow I can find, Hansi Yellow Opaque, and I like that about it um, because I like to be able to have the option to have it stand out. Um, but yeah, that's one color that's gonna be less opaque. Now the color white, like titanium white, is quite opaque. So that would maybe need more glaze if you wanted it to show the color underneath coming through. All right, so let's see. I've got some oranges kind of poking around in this shadow down here. So I'm gonna drop some of that in over that shadow tone that we've built up. Where else do I see orange? I see a little bit over here. See some bright orange there. Okay, maybe a little bit of shadow in the shadow there. And oh, we've got this really bright orange up at the top here. Let's drop that in. Um, so Dolly says the underpainting is usually the opposite color on the color wheel. Is that the rule you tend to follow? Yes, that is correct, Dolly. But I don't go by the absolute perfect true opposite. I kind of push it and use what I want to. But for the most part, yes, the underpainting is the opposite. All right, do. A little bit in there. Okay. I'm gonna go over that stem right there. Okay, let's um let's move into some of these leaves that are showing up as almost white, because I think by placing those that's gonna help us to sort out what is what. Um all right. So this white, um, it's not straight white, and it's kind of uh well, it's kind of like a beige, but I'm gonna dress it up a little bit and push it a little bit more to the blue side. Um, do I wanna do blue or do I wanna do orange? Now I'm thinking about it. I think I'm gonna actually stay with it more orange. Maybe I'll put a few little blue highlights on top, but let's, I'm gonna keep it a little more on the orange side. So the color I'm gonna make uh, is going to be this kind of beigey orange. I'm going to start with Hansi yellow. I'm sorry, I'm going to start with titanium white. I'm going to find a clean spot on my palette. Titanium white. And then I'm going to put a little bit of pyrrole red light, a little bit of Hansa yellow opaque, 
but I'm also going to dull this a pinch and put some Payne's Gray in there, which is like a navy blue. So I'm using Pyrrole Red Light, Hansa Yellow Opaque, and some Payne's Gray, just to dull that down a pinch. A little more of the red and yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to put some glaze in there. Thin that out. So this is not gonna be white just yet. This is definitely more of like a beige to start out with, but we'll push it a little bit more towards the white. See, it's kind of like this flesh tone beige. It's not a very pretty color, but we'll, we'll get there. All right, so I'm gonna find the shape up at the top that I know is kind of easy to identify. I'm gonna drop that in. I'm being kind of specific about like the outside edge of these leaves. I feel like kind of chiseling that edge in some places, is, that'll look good. Okay, so we found that. Got a little wedge of it here in the shadow. Okay. And then where else do we see that light color? We see some of it kind of up here at the top right. And coming down here, covering up some of that blue. Okay, and then we've got some of those light tones. Now this is gonna help to show off that bottom edge of that main leaf because we've got this bright highlight behind it, this bright kind of whitish leaf. I'm getting, you know, kind of specific at this, this edge right here, dropping that in. But then it's kind of dissolving out into the shadow, so then I'm not being quite so careful over here. Um, and then again, same thing, where I'm gonna be kind of specific at the edge right here of this leaf. But the thing is, I don't need my leaf to be exactly the same shape, so don't be like counting the leaf points, please don't do that, you'll drive yourself crazy and nobody's going to know. <laughs> so another reason not to worry about it. <laughs> nobody's gonna know how many points your leaf's supposed to have. So just make it work with your painting. Um, that's my best advice. Same thing when you're doing like, you know, a flower or something, like nobody's gonna count the petals. Um, you know, just make it work. So, yeah. kind of painting around the skinny stem here, getting kind of tight right there to make that kind of carved out and show up. And then we've got some more of that highlight along the edge here. And you know what? There's something kind of weird going on where this point connects with this one, like right behind the stem. Do you guys see that? I think that looks weird for the composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this top leaf come down next to it, rather than having it come down right on top of the stem. So that's one of those little tricks you can do where you make a composition that's gonna look good, not necessarily the composition that is in the photograph. Because you are in charge and you get to do those things in your painting. So there you go. Okay. I'm gonna use this beige color to put my stem in up here because I have a highlight on the stem. Then it kind of dissolves out. I just figured I could drop that in. All right, that's working. Um, okay, now we can start to really make it pop. We can start to pull some of these tones out a little bit more. So let's pull out, um, you know what, let's go back into our yellows and make some of those yellows pop a little more. So um, our yellow, if you remember, we used, we used Hansa Yellow Opaque and a little bit of Pyrrole Red Light, but we're gonna use just a tiny, tiny bit of Pyrrole Red Light and some white. Now we're gonna use more white. So this is going to be mostly 
the white and the Hansa yellow opaque, just a tiny bit of that pyrrole red. And I'm not gonna put any glaze in now because I want this to be more opaque. So this is an example of when I won't use the glaze. I want these highlights to stand out. So I'm going to go and look for the really bright areas that I see in the image. Um, so let's see, it's pretty bright right here. I'm kind of popping. You see how that really shows up on top of the color that was already there? So we're just building up those highlights. I like how that really stands out. It really makes it pop. All right, but I'm not putting this on all of the yellow leaves. I'm only putting it on the areas where I see that it's the brightest. And you'll notice a lot of times these bright highlights, they'll kind of stop where the leaf bends. So there's like a crease right here. And so there's a little bit of fold in the leaf. So that kind of stops that highlight and just brings it to a halt. Um, yeah. All right, moving along. Where else do I want some highlights? Oh, we talked about how we were gonna separate this edge from the one that's beneath it. So I can do that right now. You see how when I drop this bright highlight in, that's, that pulls that leaf forward. Yeah, some really fun colors going on here. All right. And then where else do we see that it's pretty bright with this yellow? We've got some little bright bits coming down right here. And that stem right there. And well, actually this leaf is kind of dark. I probably shouldn't have put that in quite so bright. Got some bright highlights on this duller leaf here that I started to put in with that beige tone. I'm gonna to drop some of these more yellow tones onto it. And up here, we've got a real bright yellow leaf coming in from the side. This, these leaves didn't really get outlined all that closely. I kind of was loose about my outlining there. So you, just kind of drop some color in. That leaf doesn't need to be in the exact spot. Um, okay, close counts. All right, I'm squinting. Okay, we've got leaf coming up right there. So I'm squinting so I can see like what is the most important parts to include in this image. Okay, before I get too carried away with those yellow highlights, um, I'm gonna switch and put some highlights of a different color in. Um, so I mentioned how I might put some kind of bluer highlights on these beige tones, like these really bright beige tones that we did. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make that tone um, using, let's see, I'm gonna use white, and I'm going to use a little bit of phthalo blue green shade. Um, I'm gonna go back and put some more white in. My white was a little bit contaminated, but that's not gonna matter a whole lot for this. Um, and I'm gonna thin my glaze out, or I'm gonna thin it with a little bit of glaze. And I'm gonna drop this bright tone on some of those highlights. So it's real bright up at the top here. See how this really stands out. Um, and this kind of is fun because it's going to stand out against all of those warm tones that we've been sandwiching in. So it's going to play off of it as kind of like a cool light that's shining on that leaf. Um, and we've got some of those warm or cool blue tones over here as well. Where else do we see some? Down at the bottom on this one, we see some of those cool tones. So just, I really pay a lot of attention to warm and cool 
and having that contrast. And I do think that is what makes my paintings pop. That's what makes your paintings pop when you guys do that too, is you know having that contrast of warm and cool. All right, where else do we wanna drop some in? And this is a color like this blue we used in the underpainting and now we're using it in the overpainting. So creating that sandwich effect is really fun. It kind of just gives a nod to what was there before. All right, I like that. Okay, what we need to do is we've got a few um, dark tones in the neutrals that we haven't really dropped in yet. So I'm going to make um, kind of like a dark brown that I need to put in to push some of these dark shadows in a little bit more. I'm gonna make that dark brown using alizarin crimson and um, a little bit of Hansa Yellow Opaque, which is normally like our burnt orange recipe. Um, so we're gonna do those two and then a little bit of Payne's Gray in there. So alizarin crimson, Payne's, Gar Payne's Gray, and Hansa Yellow Opaque. And I'm going to push this into some of the shadows, make those dark browns, a little more Payne's Gray. So I'm going back into those places that I see are really pretty dark in the reference image. Some of these places we just kind of put in with our green recipe to begin with, but we didn't really come back and push them darker. So this is going to do that for us. We need to really build up those darks so that they will contrast um, some of our later colors. I'm gonna put some of this into this leaf too. Just kind of give it a little different tone. All right, getting a little carried away with that dark shadow, but I think I'll put some highlights on this front leaf and that'll pull it back out because right now it's getting kind of buried into that shadow. All right, anywhere else I wanna put this dark tone? Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of white to it, to this mixture. So it had all those dark neutrals in it. Now a little more yellow in there. But now if that I've put a little bit of white in, now we can put a little depth into some of those shadows that I just built up. Okay, so where do we see some of that there? And we've got some in here. Where else do I see just this kind of neutral color in the shadows? Mm. Oh, I guess we've kind of got some up there. In some places the purple works for the shadow, but in other places I feel like we need to cover it up and put a little bit more of a neutral tone in. So again, this recipe that I'm using right now, it has alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, Hansa yellow opaque, and white in it. And it's just kind of going into some of these shadows. All right. So I want to pull those highlights out on the left side of that main focus leaf, because um, that's gonna make it stand out really nice. So what are we gonna do for those highlights? They almost look blue to me, and I think that might be really pretty to put kind of like a bright blue edge along there. So why don't we do that? Let's go back to that recipe of blue and white that was phthalo blue, green shade, and white, but now I'm gonna put a little more blue in it because we don't want it to be quite so white. Um, yeah, we're gonna make that kind of a real intense deep blue 
We're gonna put a little bit of that along the edge here to pull out that edge. But I don't wanna make it like a perfect outline, so I'm gonna kinda of dance around that edge. And actually, we've got some jumping around here too. That's gonna make this front leaf really glow. I might bury that a little bit because I feel like I got a little carried away, but maybe not. Where else do I wanna drop that deep blue in? There's a little bit bumping around up here on this one, I think. Maybe right there, okay. Um, also, before I forget, we're almost getting to the end of this demo here. Well, we're really close. But if you guys are enjoying this demo, would you please share it um, on your page? Just hit the share button and you can come right back to the demo. But I really appreciate that. It helps so many more people to find my demos and my teaching and, and just really helps me out. So thank you so much, those of you that have shared it. I see Judy has shared it. Thank you, Judy. All right, um, okay, let's, oh, we need to put this red stem in. That's missing, let's do that before we, we can't end the demo without that. Okay, so I'm gonna make that red stem using um, quinacridone magenta and some pyrrole red light. And I think I'm actually just gonna do those two. And I'm gonna get pretty tight now because I want to put this in really carefully. So I'm getting close, choking up on my brush, which I almost never do but I wanna get this nice and tight there. That looks good. And then, you know, we've got some red stems in the back here that we're gonna drop that color in and a little bit back here. So sometimes you gotta get tight. All right, and then let's look around. Where else do we see some little dabs of this color that we can do to just kind of marry that stem color? I definitely see some on that leaf. I see some up here and right there. And I'm just dropping this in like nice and heavy so that it's gonna stand out. We see it on our focus leaf right here. I'm gonna use it to cover up a little of that blue that I got kind of carried away with right there. It's okay. Um, and we see a little dab of it right there. I think I lost you for a second there. I'm sorry if the video froze. All right, sorry guys, the video froze for a second, but I think I'm back. Okay, so we got some of those little jabs of red jumping around there. Um, and now I wanna pop the orange tones a little bit more. I feel like our orange, oranges need to be a, a bit more intense. So let's go back to our orange recipe. The orange recipe was pie roll red light and hand the yellow opaque and white, but now we're gonna use a little more of the pie roll red in there. And we're gonna drop that in a little bit heavier. I love pie roll red light. It's just such a nice popping orange. I'm gonna put a little glaze in there too. And yeah, this color is really gonna jump, I think. Let's do it. Okay, so where do I see it the brightest? Um, I need a little white too. I don't think I put any white in yet. Okay, so this orange leaf up at the top is super intense, but I don't wanna put it everywhere. I'm just dropping a few brush strokes of it really bright there. Um, this one right here stands out pretty nice. This one. Again, we're not filling the whole leaf in, we're just looking for the areas that are the brightest. And if you've got a big area, you know, just put a big old brush stroke down. Don't be afraid to do that. Yeah, this is popping it out a lot more. It's these last few jabs at the end that like really make it all come together. 
I like sandwiching all these colors together. I'm gonna use some of this to make a little highlight on this stem right here. I'm gonna get kind of specific there. Okay, that works. And you know, I'm gonna actually push this even brighter I'm gonna, by adding some more white to it. We're just about done here at six o'clock. There's a few more little things I wanna do. Um, yeah, we're gonna get this really bright here with some white. This is almost like a peach now. I need to add a little more yellow. Okay. Where else do we see highlights? Let me drop some on here to kind of transition this dark shadow to this highlight we've got there. We needed something in between. And where else? A little bit there. Got a little streak of a weird red in there. I didn't like that. I always like to have my colors mixed really well. I don't like having the mix on the palette. All right, we're getting close. I think we need some little stronger highlights on the center leaf just to make that stand out a bit more. Um, so I think we want more of like that magenta. So I'm gonna go in with magenta and white and put some brighter pops on that center leaf. And I'm not putting any glaze in now. I want this to be opaque. Okay, so where do we see it the brightest? We see like right here. Mm, maybe that was a little bit too white. I'm gonna put some more magenta in. Need to get myself some more magenta, but maybe it's not too white. Maybe I just need to do a little bit more of it. I do like how it stands out so much, but I'm gonna try just putting a little more magenta in. It definitely like draws focus onto that center leaf. Maybe I do want that. So, Sometimes if you put something in one area and it feels like, ooh, that's too much, sometimes all you need to do is put it somewhere else. You don't necessarily need to take it out. You just need to give it like somebody else to play with. I think that's what we're gonna do here. This seems to be working. I like it. Put a little more magenta in, darken it a little bit. I like this magenta, I don't wanna to do too much, so I'm gonna stop, I think. But I wanna put this, the pinkier tone that had a little more white in it, I'm gonna drop that in to this spot in the background just to give that somewhere else to play. And maybe one up here. I think that works. And now I think I wanna brighten my blue highlight in just like one or two places on the edge of that leaf to make that leaf stand out. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my blue and white mixture, but I'm gonna put like mostly white in it and just add a little bit brighter blue sparkle in a couple places. So, cause this leaf is kind of like wet. And so we're just gonna drop a few little twinkles there, maybe right there. Yeah, that's good. And now that makes me feel like this white at the very top needs to be a little brighter. So I'm gonna come back with some more white and push that a little bit brighter yet. So this is white and phthalo blue green shade. And now there's no glaze in here because we want this to be really opaque. We're gonna make this leaf really jump by really brightening that up. Same over here. So I wait for the very end to put the very brightest tones down. You see how they really stand out when they are contrasted by all the other colors?
And sometimes those bright tones are actually like layered underneath other leaves. They're not always the leaves that are the closest to you, which is kind of interesting. Sometimes they're in the background. All right. I think, I think we're gonna be done for tonight. I think so. Oh, you know what? This one little stem here, I wanna see that stem goes along. I'm gonna make that kind of like a pink tone. I'm gonna do pyrrole red and some white, and then I'm gonna be done, I promise. We're just a little bit over, 605, not bad. Okay, so that stem, yeah. Just dropping that in, and then maybe a little on this one. This is pyrrole red light and white. Yeah, I like it on there too. I like that pink color. Drop that a few more places too. Okay, somebody stop me or I'm gonna destroy this painting by doing too much. All right, we're gonna be done. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining me um, in this demo. Um, also, uh, I wanted to mention to you guys, you know, you can always come back and watch these as a replay. You can always get the outlines on my um, website. But I also wanted to tell you that all of the 2021 outlines are available on my website to purchase, but only until December 15th. So just wanted to give you a quick reminder there. Um, if there are any previous paint-alongs that you want to try out, you want to make sure you head over to my website and check those out before December 15th. Um, thanks again for watching guys. Thanks for sharing this demo. I really appreciate it and I hope you had fun. Um, if you did the paint along, please share your painting in my group, Allie's Paint Friends. We always like to see what everyone has done. All right. Have a great night guys. Bye-bye.